So I think I will get started now just to make sure that we stick to time. So good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our online workshop on teaching languages, learn to save time and master AI with three essential tools. I'm your moderator, Phoebe Reynolds, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be here today with four incredible speakers who will guide us on how AI can revolutionize education. Uh, for everyone that can't understand English very well, you can just turn on uh, the caption and you can adjust to your own native language. I've been told you can do this. If you ask me technically how this works, that might be an issue, but we do have a few people on hand. Um, so if you want some help, just message in the box um, and hopefully we can get that sorted for you. Um, and just a reminder, like I said before, all prizes, certificates and badges are completely guaranteed for you. Just stick around till the end. Um, and if you have any questions, pop them in the box ready for the Q&A. So let's get going. Uh, in our first session, we will deep dive into the world of AI in education. So let's give a warm welcome to our first speaker, Dr. Charles Wiles. Dr. Wiles is a renowned expert in robotics and AI, holding a PhD from Oxford University. He's also an angel investor, actively supporting innovative ventures in education technology. So Dr. Wiles, whenever you're ready, please take it away. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Phoebe. Um, yes, um, let me share my presentation then. If you just give me one second to get my presentation up and um, and then I'll do this full screen, hopefully. And um, let me just start this full screen. Is that the full screen button? There you go. Can you see it full screen, everybody? Is, it, is that, yes. is yeah, that good? Yeah. Fantastic. Great. So yes, hello. Um, thank you very much, Phoebe. And thank you, everybody, for um, turning up today to listen to me and, and, and the other great speakers. Um, really, uh, you know, for me, I thought, let's 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 think about this question as as to what will the world languages classroom of the future look like? You know, um, I think one of the really interesting things um, um, today is that actually AI is still in its infancy. When I think back, I, I, I like to say when I'm talking about this, that it's like being back in 1994. If you remember in 1993, the world's first web browser came out. It was a web browser called Mosaic. You may, you may or may not remember that depending on where you were in the world. Um, and over the next um, 10 years, everything changed. Everything changed, doesn't it? I mean, we can't remember a time now without the internet. Um, it, it just pervades our entire life. And ultimately, it's something that makes our life better. Um, it makes things more efficient. It allows us to do a lot more. Um, and 1993 was the year that the first web browser came out. Um, and 2023 was really the year when um, AI came of age. It's when ChatGPT suddenly started to be doing phenomenal things and, and, and deliver APIs that people could plug into. So 2023 is like 1993, and we're in, we're in, so I like to say we're in 1994 with AI, right? And over the next 10 years, everything is going to change. Um, obviously, there will be some things that change for the better, as with any great technology shift, but actually so much is going to change for the for the better. Again, if you think about the, the internet and the web, I mean, one of the losers would be bricks and mortar stores. I mean, I know in my high street in the UK, there are, there are, um, you know, there are fewer retail shops, um, but there are now more restaurants, for example. So there will be some areas where, where um, that, that, that is disadvantage, but on the whole, it's just going to be incredibly fantastic and it's going to make us all far more productive. And I think one of the classes of people, one of the types of people that are going to benefit the most from all of this is, is teachers, because we all know teachers around the world are incredibly overworked. Um, we know how, how hard um, everybody has to work and, and how much they have to do. And I think all of that stuff is going to become a lot easier and give you the ability as teachers to spend much more time doing what we all love, which is actually helping students learn um, and, and evolve. And I think one of the really interesting ways to think about AI uh, in the classroom is just to imagine how your classroom would look it, today if you had a physical, a real person for every student in your classroom, a real, you know, a personal assistant. So you're at the front of the classroom directing stuff, but every student has their own 
uh, personal other teacher that's you know st standing behind them offering them help and advice and coming to you when they have particular issues that they need your advice on but you're much more of a director of the classroom well really that's what ai brings to you it's or what it will be bringing to you it's going to bring you the ability to have so essentially a personal assistant that you can give tasks to and that those tasks can be very personalized and different for every single student in the classroom um um, and that's really important. So we're only just getting started. You're going to see many things change over the next 10 years. Um, and I, I like to think if you go back to 1993, when the first web browser came out, some of you may know that Google as a company didn't actually start until 1998, five years later. So over the next 10 years, there'll be hundreds, thousands of companies launching that will become household names that don't even exist yet. Right. This is tremendously exciting time. So let's go back to the question, what will the world languages classroom of the future be like? Um, AI and actually also virtual reality um, are changing everything and learning experiences are gonna become much more personalized because you're gonna be able to direct your, 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 your AIs, your personal assistants to with the general high level stuff, but they're gonna do, you know, very, be very personalized to each student's individual needs. They're going to be far more interactive because actually that's one of the things you get. No longer will you be just talking to the class um, and, and, you know, maybe getting the answer back from, from one or two students who put their hand up. They will be interacting with their own, um, with, with the AI themselves. And so they'll be getting a far more interactive um, and engaging experience. Um, and ultimately it's going to be far more immersive. So, you know, um, this isn't just about virtual reality, although I do think virtual reality is, is, is an important part of it. It will allow students to get much more engaged and immersed in the content with much richer learning experiences. So um, here is an image. This is this is kind of how I imagine um, uh, uh, students will be in the classroom in, 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 in not too many years time. They'll be putting on a virtual reality headset and they'll be finding themselves underneath the Eiffel Tower having a conversation with a Parisian, assuming they're learning French, of course. <laughs> I mean, um, I guess they could be having a, a, they could have met a German tourist there and be speaking in German, but they'll be, they'll, they'll be finding themselves immersed in these experiences where they're talking to real people and having conversations. Maybe they'll be going on a quest. Um, maybe they'll be given a quest, which is to say, okay, you need to talk to somebody, find out where the nearest um, supermarket is and go to that supermarket and and purchase uh, a, a baguette uh, for example so that we but you know maybe the quest will be a lot more exciting and rich than that but that's the kind of experiences um that we, that, that'll be coming interestingly um this image was generated with ai i literally said to dali from open ai i said generate me an image of a student in a vr headset standing underneath the eiffel tower um and you know 30 seconds later i had this image so it's it's you know it's amazing what what AI is, is is bringing and changing. If you haven't, I'm sure many of you have tried the, the the image generation features of many of these AI platforms, but if you haven't, it's it's incredible the sort of stuff that you can generate. That um, you know, would, would you'd have to pay somebody hundreds of dollars to to create an image like this. I've always. Um, one of the interesting things I thought is I'd actually try a little experiment um, to to see. Um, you know how how close we are to giving students the, these kind of very interactive experiences already. So, just imagine you were given a a student a a task. You know, in in in, in the future, you said, um, "Here is your task. You will interview a famous French basketball player. I want you to a find out if he has a pet, and if so, the pet's name. Discover where he was born, and ask him if he has any hobbies, and if so, what they are." When you have this information, say goodbye, and we'll ask you some questions to see if you found out this information. So this is a, a quite a simple task in principle, but today, um, you know, how would you actually do that? You know, you, you, you couldn't really do it, could you? Because you'd actually, the only way you could really do it is if you had somebody pretending to be a French basketball player and each student um, went and, asked, you know, went and talked to him for, for five minutes to ask these questions. But actually, um, I, I, I decided to try this with ChatGPT and see whether it could do it today. And, and it was amazing. Um, here, here is um, what I said to ChatGPT. I said, I want you to play the role of a famous French basketball player. You only speak and understand the French language. You have just scored the winning basket in an important basketball match. You have a dog called Hen Henry or Henri, as they say in France. 
You love playing board games in your spare time. You were born in Morocco. I will play the role of an interviewer. If I ask you a question in English, tell me that you don't understand. That's important. Never tell me the answer to a question if I ask a question in English as you only understand French. This is what I put directly into chat GPT as an experiment to see how good the AI is at uh, engaging in, in, in this kind of very interactive and personalized experience. Um, hopefully some of you can speak French, but um, ChatGPT responded to me in French, even though I'd put in all my questions in, in English. Um, D'accord, je suis prêt. Okay, I'm ready. Can you um, put your questions to me in French, if please? So I said, bonjour. Um, and he said, bonjour back. I said, do you have a cat? I'm trying to cheat here. I'm trying to see whether I can actually trick ChatGPT into, you know, as a student would and just answer me in English. Uh, and it says... Uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Can you put your question to me in France? I thought, well, let's try again. Do you have any pets? It said, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Can you put your question to me in French again, please? So, you know, I've given some very simple instructions to the AI here, and it's actually doing exactly what I wanted to. Um, then I said in my appalling French, avez-vous un chat? And he said, no, I don't have a cat, but I have a dog called Henry. Amazing, right? I've already solved the first part of my mission because I understood how to say uh, in French, do you have a cat? Where were you born? I thought I'd try and trick it again. I don't understand. Please ask me your question in French. And then I use my appalling French to ask where he, where he was born. And this is, this is where I really love it. And this is sort of like just how amazing some of this AI stuff is, which is, he said, I'm sorry, but I think you went, you meant to ask which is proper French. It's actually teaching me the French, the proper way to ask, where, where are you born in French? And it says, I, I was born in, in Morocco. Um, this is literally just off the shelf. Now, obviously you can't ask a student to do that because you'd have, to, yeah, the student doesn't have access to chat GPT and you'd have to, um, you, know, you, you know, to make chat GPT to do this, you've got to put that prompt at the beginning, which would obviously tell the student all the answers. But interestingly, um, we're now working on productizing this into a feature that you can use. And we're going to make it so that you can actually define characters, define their, you know, some facts about them, and then give students um, a, a, user a user experience where they go to that user experience and they have just the student part of this without being able to see um, how it has been prompted. So... Um, this is just one simple example. And you can imagine that actually we can take experiences like this. We can put in speech to text for the student and text to speech for the, for the AI. We can put that on a virtual character and we can put that character into a virtual 3D world. And actually you could be having this, this the student could be having this conversation by speaking um, in a VR headset to a real, what appears to be a real basketball player under the Eiffel Tower. Um, and I think that's amazing. Um, right. Well, I'm going to stop there. Um, that's my part of the presentation. I hope that's excited you a little bit about the future of, of the, the future classroom for world languages. Amazing. Thank you very, very much, Charles. It was a yeah, it's it's an incredible future that we've got. And that was so informative and, and insightful. Um, and thank you for opening our minds to the incredible potential of AI language in, in education and, and how it works. Um, so let's move on to our second speaker. Uh, we're also joined by Kieran Howard today, who is an ed tech expert who will demonstrate how a teaching platform like ChatGPT, for example, which we've just been looking at, acts as your personal assistant, automating everyday tasks like assessment creation, grading and reporting. Get ready to say goodbye to late nights and endless paperwork. Kieran will explore a treasure trove of time saving features from ready to use quizzes and lessons and templates to data analysis that gives you deep insights into your students' progress. Kieran, when you're ready, please take it away. Thank you, Phoebe. Um, good evening, guys. And, and thank you, Charles, for laying um, incredible foundations for me to, uh, to build on. So I really appreciate that. At Zish, we're so passionate about supporting the teacher and, and, and the pupil. Um, you know, our goal is to hopefully support you as much as we can do to, to make your life easier. We appreciate that um, you're incredibly busy. So 
AI, um, emergent learning, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, we are exploring every avenue possible to um, to, to support you in uh, in every way that we can. So um, what I'm going to do, I will um, share my screen and we will get cracking. Uh, do, do, do. Okay. Right. So just to introduce myself, um, as Phoebe kindly did, my name is Kieran Howard. I look after um, the global partnerships here at um, Zish. And now the really important bit, you know, the aims of, of this demonstration, I think actually um, it really um, signifies uh, our mission at, at Zish. And, you know, we're, uh, we're on this relentless pursuit um, to, to support educators. So we want to save you time. That that's key. Uh, we don't want to add any any more extra work to your plates. Um, we want to boost it, student engagement. I'm really excited to show you some of the features that you can uh, use on our platform, Quizlize. Um, and then finally, um, oh my screen. So highlight learning gaps, which is you know imperative. Um, you know the ability to to personalize learning. Um, so really excited to to share these um, share these features with you. Um, so next page. So we're going to start with Chat GPT. Um, Charles kindly um, kind of built those foundations there, and then we'll move to um, Quizlize and how effectively how our product Quizlize um, plugs into uh, Chat GPT um, to to support in in your delivery. So let's get cracking so let's pretend i'm a teacher like uh, many of you guys on this call i go into chat gpt and i'm going to put in a topic of uh, create a text for 10 year old students learning let's say french sinistra started us on that uh, on the topic of global warming let's see what happens so we've got the translation here now let's say i want to extract the difficult words from this piece of text so extract the difficult words um, and let's see what the translation is like um, in english and give the translation in English. Okay. Um, now let's go one step further. Let's create some example phrases in French using each of these words. Now, the idea with this, as Charles said, is creating that environment of a, a virtual um, assistant. Oh, that's that not working. Du -du -du. Let's try that again. Great. Examples in French. It's difficult, but. Hmm. There we go. Okay. Now, final step here. So, as you can see, you're kind of you're you're layering the, the level of support that um that you have. Um. So now, create a lesson plan in English for these. Um. Da -da -da. Do, 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 for, uh, create a lesson plan in English for these phrases. Uh, do, 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 with the aim of students to create their own story in French. Okay, so within a very short period of time, you've been able to um, create a lesson plan off the back of the uh, information that you've put into ChatGPT, which is quite powerful. Now, 
this is where kind of the, the integration with um, Quizlice comes along. So let's say that we want to um, broaden um, or kind of test the uh, understanding of the, um, the, the, the students um, kind of recall of the um, of the words that we've got here, these difficult words. So I'll copy that. I will go into um, Quizlize. So as you can see here, what we're going to jump straight into is making a smart quiz with AI help. Now, for you uh, world languages teachers, this these features down the bottom um, are incredibly valuable. But you can do a whole host of other things. Unfortunately, um, we've got so many features, I don't have time to show you them all. But what I'll jump into here is creating a vocabulary quiz. Now, I've copied those difficult words from ChatGPT, and I can paste them into this vocabulary, vocabulary list. Okay. Now, we can choose a language. So we'll stick on the topic of, of French. But as you can see, you've got a whole host of different languages that you can pick from. Um, my French isn't amazing, but probably the the the, the best out out of the out of this list. So, um, students are learning French. Show translations in English. Translations from English to French. Generate questions. Now, the AI tool, as you can see on the right hand side here, is creating um, suggestions of uh, the, the questions that, that we can pick. Now, let's say um, we give you full control over what you what you pick here. I could click into, let's say, carbon dioxide, for example, and not only does it give you the, the correct answer, but it also creates the uh, the, uh, the alternative, uh, the incorrect ones. And on the left-hand side here, which is really beneficial, is it's reinforcing that kind of virtual assistant once again, where if you wanted to, um, you can select after a wrong answer, provide a second chance um, with a hint and then an explanation of the of the correct answer. Um, so and I can go through here, select the um, select the, the information that I want to put into the quiz. Now, we firmly believe that you should have the opportunity to um, use Quizlize alongside other platforms. Perhaps you're familiar with Kahoot, Quizzes, Look It, you know, Google Forms. You can export um all this information onto those platforms you know we want to collaborate we don't want to confine you um so then i can save and preview vocab quiz um let's say global warming and save and preview but what i want to do before we move on i just want to go back to the start once again and just give you one more example so let's say let's go for reading comprehension so perhaps you've got some pupils within your classroom that aren't quite as engaged now we understand that if we can have something personalized it kind of enriches the the, the learning um the learning outcomes so let's say we want to create a story so charles and phoebe now on the topic of we'll stick with the topic of global warming um so charles and phoebe um they want to want to explore different ways to travel from Hong Kong to England to reduce global warming. Now let's see what it gives us. Choose a language. As you can see, there's a whole host as I, as I touched on, but we'll stick with French. Write the text in French. Now we can align um, the, the, the content in here with your uh, curriculum. Um, so based on where you are, we can then um, uh, integrate the, that information. But what we'll go for here is ACTFL, uh, novice mid, for example, write questions um, in English. OK, so let's see what we get here. So it might take a little bit of time um, just because we're we're certainly testing the, the AI features. So here we go. Here's a suggested text passage, okay? Now, I can approve it and create questions or I can edit it. If there was anything in there that you didn't quite like, um, you can go in and, and change. Now, whilst we wait, so it's created that text, you can see it on the left-hand side here. Uh, it's gonna generate the questions in English. What is Phoebe's idea for an eco-friendly mode of travel? So it's, a, it's just an incredible way to, to personalize the the learning, um, uh, the, the the learning outcomes, and and just uh, really focus on that engagement. So, on the left hand side here, I'm going to save and preview. 
Okay, right. So um, if we had uh, attached these uh, these questions to on the left hand side, measure skills from any curriculum, this is a really great way to ensure that the content is aligning um, with your uh, the, the curriculum that you're, you're following. Um, I can scroll down and see the, um, the questions that I've selected. But what's really, really cool here is we can now gamify it. You can give it as a, a traditional quiz um, format, but uh, we get a, you know huge feedback um, on the, the the benefit of gamifying the, the the learning process. Now, Charles was the mastermind behind creating Blockers. Um, it's our Minecraft inspired um, gamification, which um, is a, is a huge hit. Personally, I don't really understand Minecraft, but um, it gets a, a huge amount of, of positive feedback. Let's go with Sorcerer, probably more my my level. It's a little bit simpler. So let's demo Sorcerer, just so you can get a feel for, for this. Now I'll just mute it. Okay, so let me move the bar. Okay, so let's understand how to play first. Shoot balls of the same color to destroy them. Answer questions to get ammo. Destroy all balls to win the game. So just to give you a quick insight, I'm going to try to shoot and get three of the same color in a row. So my score has jumped up to 200. Ammo has gone up to three. I'm not great at this. Okay, now answer questions to get more ammo. So on the left-hand side here, carbon dioxide. Okay, so I need to, what, what does that convert to in, in French? So let's say, great, I've got it right. So that's given me five more um, bits of ammo for me to continue with the game. So hopefully you've got a bit of an insight um, onto um, the, the gamification side of things. Um, but what's really valuable is the, is the data and the insights you can get off the back of um, off the back of the, taking the, the games. So bear with me one second. Okay, right. So let's go into uh, my classes. So off the back of taking um, taking a quiz, you can see on the right hand side here the activities. These are four different quizzes that have been um, that have been taken in the past. I'm going to analyze these results. So this is where you get that real rich data. So if I sc scroll down on the left-hand side here, if I hover above it, you've got, as I mentioned, the curriculum that you can align to, which is really valuable for your um, for your understanding of uh, how you can personalize learning off the back of the quizzes. So as you scroll through here, you can see how many uh, people's got the right, the question correct versus incorrect. Um, you can see a leaderboard, which is, which is great. Um, so you can see how they're progressing uh, in each quiz. Um, but what's super important is who needs help, okay? So I can click show me. Now this gives you, we, categ we have three different categories. Um, needs help is if they've if a pupil has scored below 50%. The amber color almost there is between 50 and 80%. And then strong is anything above 80%. So we can see Edward has struggled with this quiz. We can go in and see, you know, even down to how long it takes Edward to answer a question. Is he rushing it? Is he taking um, a, a long time? Um, really strong insights um, with regards to that. What they need help with, so really valuable. So each question, you can see a full breakdown of how the how the pupils have, have got on. Skills and mastery, um, as I said, those three separate categories. Um, we can see the student names, who falls into what. So you could say, for example, Ali, who's who falls into the mastery category. Ali, can you go spend some time with Edward? Or you can create, it can really inform your teaching off the back of it. Differentiation, okay, or adaptation, whatever you want to call it. Um, depending on what category you fall into, you get a differentiated follow-on resource, really valuable for the um. Uh, for the continued learning of, of the pupils. This is really beneficial improvements. So I can see that Edward at the top here scored 17% in his first try. 
in his second um, attempt, he scored 33%. And you can see that for each of the pupils that have taken uh, multiple attempts at this quiz. What's also valuable is I can see which pupils have only taken the quiz once. So that is a real kind of um, quick run through of the, the data side of things. Just before I finish up, what's really beneficial is the mastery side of things. So if I go in here, over time, for every quiz that we do aligned to a specific standard, you can see how Heather is tracking over, you know, not, not just one quiz, it's kind of aggregated across, you know, a whole term or a whole academic year that then supports her teacher when she moves on to um, the, uh, the next class in the next academic year. Um, really, really beneficial. You can dig a little bit deeper and see how they're uh, progressing against certain skills. Um, the, the tech, we're, we're absolutely blessed with the, how the technical team have, have built out Quizlize. There's so many more functions that I would love to show you, but, but that is a kind of a crash course in, in Quizlize. So I hope that was beneficial. I hope it sparked a bit of interest. And, you know, ultimately we want to, you know, save you time, engage pupils and get you that rich data to inform personalized learning. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Kieran. Um, it's incredible to see how you can integrate ChatGPT into Quizalyze. That was such an educational talk. Um, yeah, ChatGPT is amazing and, and all of this um, blows my mind a bit. So very exciting. Um, let's move swiftly on to our third speaker though. So introducing Thomas Thompson, uh, an EdTech CEO who also manages to juggle a teaching career alongside that too. Um, he will talk about how AI on the platform eduade.ai can help language teachers. So Thomas, whenever you're ready, please take it away. Or maybe Thank Karen, you, Phoebe. Karen, if you could stop sharing your screen as well. Thank you. Perfect. Sorry, Thomas, go ahead. <laughs> no. Yes. Thank you, Phoebe. And uh, thank you, Karen, for sharing that valuable insight into ChatGPT and using Quizalize. Um, as Phoebe said, my name is Thomas Thompson. I am a co-founder and the CEO of EduAid AI, a platform for AI-assisted instructional design. And I'm also an active classroom teacher. I teach social studies, history, in uh, Maryland in the United States. So uh, let me share my screen. And I guess this presentation is inspired by Charles's point about 1994. Here's a 1994 inspired uh, presentation with a very old school user interface here. So I wanna focus on two problems before we dive into Eduate AI. Um, some problems with AI and education more broadly, and some problems in education and how the two relate to one another. I'll start with the problems in education, which are access to high quality instructional materials, the research to practice pipeline, how do I integrate the best practices that I can into my classroom, and then that of personalizing and differentiating those instructional materials to meet the needs of the students in front of me. Those are the problems of education. The problems of AI remind me of a great short story by the Argentinian writer, Jorge Luis Borges. It's called The Library of Babel, in which all of the world's information, everything that ever could be written down was written down and put into a library. And well, what happened was when you have so much information, it's hard to sift through it and find the truly valuable things. And there's just a bunch of nonsense around the um, main characters of the story. Generative AI presents us with massive amounts of information quickly, but we have to figure out how to query that information, how to integrate that information into our classrooms. That is where a tool like Eduaid comes into play. Eduaid puts educational parameters around generative AI. We constrain generative AI to the purely instructional. At a high level, it's an application for AI-assisted lesson planning, a workspace that integrates evidence-based instructional design with the power of generative AI. It's teacher-facing. We um, do not allow for or do not ask for student accounts to be on the site. Specifically, it's a place for teachers to plan instruction and to gather together materials for instruction. We offer a suite of personalization tools so that you can actually get into what the AI said and make it your own. And all of the resources are 
freely retainable, revisable, remixable, reusable, and you can stack them. There's over a hundred different resources and learning objects on Eduid. So I don't want to waste too much time. I'll dive into the platform to give you a sense of how or rather what constraining AI within education looks like. If you were to make an Eduate AI account, this is the first page you would be confronted with, our content generator. And I've already highlighted some tools that I believe are quite pertinent for language instruction. We, as language teachers, need to build a rich repertoire of expressions and role-based um, competency. We need instruction focused on meaning. We need learners focused on form. And of course, you have things around speech, basic sentences, sound systems, and um, vocabulary. And we have a variety of tools to assist you in this regard. I should preface before we dive in that Eduate is available in 16 different languages. You're able to mix, match, and target instruction wherever necessary. So to sticking with um, Jorge Luis Borges' Library of Babel as our generative example, I could just plug that in here. Eduade comes with this um, enhance button where you could take a few basic keywords and translate it into a student learning objective. So I took just the title of the story and the author, and now we're going to dive in there. Let me hit um, reading comprehension. And what this will do is it will take a te text on whatever topic. And that's something I would really like to highlight. You're able to personalize language instruction now to passages that have relevance to the student and have relevance to the context in which they exist. I'm using it on a short story that I particularly enjoy, but you could plug in whatever topic it is that would garner student interest. In this case, it's a short text, it gives an overview of the book, and then gives a number of questions, reading comprehension questions. Perhaps you want keywords and you want to do some vocabulary support around this text. We have tools for that. This transform button here, click, extract keywords. And now we have a number of vocabulary supports. Perhaps we want to engage students in discussion around this reading comprehension assignment. You just build a logical sequence of instruction built into the Eduate platform. Yes, this is all could be done on something like ChatGPT, Anthropics, Claude, or any other generative AI platform. However, where Eduate stands apart is that, again, it is constrained within the educational, and it makes these high-quality instructional materials available at a much lower cost than what it would take to, say, use GPT-4 or some other um, bespoke large language model. An important part of the instruction beyond resource creation, and of course, there's over a hundred different resource types and I have not nearly enough time to um, show all of them to you, but these are just a few that I believe are pertinent to, again, language instruction. But a large piece of instruction, of course, is providing students with timely and actionable feedback. And when you have 30 to 40 students in a class, five or six classes a day, being able to give those students feedback on their writing or feedback on their assignments can be challenging. It can be time consuming. And the feedback that you're providing may not be of a high quality or of the quality you want it to be simply because you are constrained in time. Here's a student writing example that I'm going to take. They wrote a brief essay on an American history topic. Just again, that's my context as a teacher, but it could be on any topic. You input that student writing into our feedback bot, and this is where we begin to see the power of large language models. Now I can give that student a report on their spelling and grammar, if that's the level where your student is at. They have not yet mastered basic spelling and grammar. You can hit add to workspace, and now you're going to have actionable feedback that you can provide to that student based on their writing, based on the work that they have done. Say you have students, a mix of students, right? Some students have already mastered basic spelling and grammar. Well, you can take the feedback report and go a level deeper to the deeper mechanics of writing and give feedback on syntactical correctness. And that is going to line by line comb the student's text 
and provide them with actionable steps to improve their writing and communication. Logic and reasoning, that may be a deeper level and different forms of instruction. Or if you have a special way that you would like to grade student writing and work assignments, we have a custom area where you can input your own rubric and give students actionable feedback based on that. So at a high level, Eduate AI is meant to remove many of the barriers to accessing generative AI that you may face in using something like ChatGPT. Looking at the blank cursor and not knowing exactly what it is you want to create, it doesn't necessarily help you brainstorm. You have to come with an original idea and then ask the AI to do something with it. Using Eduate, you are able to collaborate with the AI in a in a more granular way where you have full power and control over the assignments in your classroom. Keyword assignment, for example, just to show off a few other tools and then I'll turn it back over to Phoebe. Giving students very brief passages, exploring vocabulary, adjectives, nouns, parts of speech, building in comprehension as questions on top of that. And from here, you're able to now sequence instruction. You're able to build out a logical flow from idea to idea and personalize that instruction to meet the unique needs of your students. That is just a little bit of what one generative AI tool can do. But it is important as these tools proliferate and become more and more common in the classroom that we make careful decisions about what we bring before students and that we are always in the loop fact-checking and working with the AI as opposed to automating our jobs, automating our tasks, finding a collaborative flow that makes us not only quicker, but better as teachers. Thank you all. I hope you find um, Eduate AI to be useful and the rest of the sessions here to answer your questions regarding generative AI. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Thomas. Um, I myself actually haven't really explored Eduid, um and I definitely will be now. So uh, that was wonderful. Um, okay, so let's move on to our final speaker, uh, Rose Mutison. Rose is an ex ESL teacher from the Philippines, and she will be talking about the challenges that she faced when teaching in Southeast Asia, especially with regards to teaching in the Philippines. She will also discuss how AI has helped her to overcome this situation. So Rose, when you're ready, please take it away. Thank you, Phoebe, for the short but sweet introduction. <laughs> um, good day, everyone. It's evening in the Philippines. So to the Philippine audience, good evening. Uh, to start off, please um, allow me to share my screen. So I hope that you have uh, been learning so far. I mean, available um, anywhere you are for as long as you have the the devices needed, all right? So, <clears throat> okay, once again, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Rosemary Season. I am a professional ed tech advocate educator by background, a former ESL as our um, uh, Miss Phoebe earlier mentioned, and I am from the Southeast Asia. I used to teach um, secondary language for uh, Southeast Asian learners. And of course, I am from the Philippines. So before we move to this, uh, to the discussion for this last part of the session, please may I know where are you guys coming from? I mean, the audience kindly, kindly tell me where you are from in the chat box, please. Let me see. I wish I could, I could even greet you in your language, but. <laughs> All right, so we have from Malaysia, from the Philippines, Indonesia, Egypt. Wow, Mabuhay from the Philippines. All right, thank you very much for your participation. I hope you are enjoying the, the discussion. And of course, you are, you are as well learning. Okay, going forward, um, since this is more on, more about um wrapping up the discussion and uh, finding out how these solutions can be applicable to our current situation. I actually prepared um, 
uh, three quick questions for you. Let's have this learning fun and engaging, shall we? <laughs> All right, so I prepared three questions for the icebreaker. I hope everyone will participate because it's going to be fun. So if you can see the link below, you can type in the link in your um, browser and I can as well um, paste the link to the to the to the to the um, chat box so that you can easily click on it and enter your name. So whatever you name you wish to enter, it's fine. Um, it's gonna be just for fun, <laughs> nothing very serious, but just to be fun. Okay, hang on. Oops. So let me share the uh, the link. So as I said, I prepared three questions for you. I hope you can answer it well, well, definitely, <laughs> because um, it's just for um, our icebreaker uh, activity for this session. Okay, so anyone ready to finish? So this activity will last only for three minutes. What you can uh, actually do is click, oh, a lot of them already in it. <laughs> so what you can actually do in this activity is uh, Click on the link and then enter the name, whatever, whatever name you feel comfortable uh, um, entering it on, you can do so. And then answer the three questions. So three minutes starts now. After three minutes, I will close the activity. Okay, so let's give them some time, three minutes. Okay, while you guys are answering, I am actually would like to see what you are performing or how do you perform? Okay. Let me reshare my screen so that you can as well see what I can see from my end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so how many participants have entered the activity so far? We've got 32. Wow, look at the colors. You're doing great. <laughs> okay. All right, so continue. We have one more minute left. And then after that, we will stop the activity so that we can move on to the rest of the uh, discussion for this session. Right. Okay. Shall we look at the, uh, the dashboard here? Okay, I set it to unlimited tries in case you enjoyed it a lot and then later you wish to try it again and, you know, have some time to think of it as if you do not know the answer. <laughs> All right, so, okay, time is up, everyone. Thank you so much for your participation. Let's now move back to the slide and go further to this discussion. Thank you so much to the 34 uh, participants who participated in this activity. All right, so I hope you really enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it though? Can you comment down please? Did you enjoy it? <laughs> How's the experience? Wow, look at that muscle. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Okay, so actually, if you enjoyed it yourself, as an educator, what more if we let our students experience this kind of tools, right? So if you yourself get excited about it, what more if your students are also experiencing the same thing like what you have just experienced? Okay, so those are only few of a lot, a lot of features on Quizlet that you can you can use in your teaching. Now going forward to this discussion. The, the vocabularies involved in that in that uh, activity are as follows. We 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 define we define what language is. We also define what barrier is, and lastly, we define the language barrier. 
So look at the look at the picture. Uh, what do you notice? So we notice what? Two groups of people and there is something in the middle. So language barrier as a language teacher, or even not a language teacher, right? Um it, it is a it is a it is the greatest challenge for us teachers to impart the spirit of language through communication to our learners, correct? So um, the speakers earlier mentioned about some uh, about tools, and most especially they highlighted the objective of the tools. And these are what? Save time, provide timely manner support, and of course, make our students excellent when it comes to using the spirit of language in communication. Because um, when we do this effectively, we will be able to equip our students to enhance their, their, uh, their connectivity into the global community, not just within our community, but the global community. So why is it very important? It is important because when individuals can effectively communicate with each other through a shared language, it fosters understanding, trust, and teamwork, leading to successful collaboration and achievements. So basically, we are promoting unity when we imparted effectively the spirit of language. Well, that is the idea. Right? But we must face the fact that we have challenges. We have different challenges, particularly if we are very foreign to that particular language that we are talking about. Now, you as a teacher, what do you commonly, uh, or what are the situations that you, you experience yourselves in teaching language? What are the challenges when you teach your students uh, a foreign language, let's say, or even your even your own language. What is the challenge when you impart them the knowledge of the the spirit of this language? Please, can someone tell me what are the challenges that you face as a teacher when you teach language to your students? Yes, that's right. Cultural differences. What else? When you, for example, would like to teach them a particular word, let's say, and the meaning of this word and its application, uh, what is the uh, challenge that you face? Especially nowadays that we're dealing with what? With the, with the, with the kids who are technology integrated. Okay, so thank you for the participation, Mr. Clark. I appreciate that. All right, so let's dig in even, uh, even deeper on the challenges, right? So before that, as mentioned by our uh, speakers earlier, AI-powered tools at your fingertips, the beneficial impact of these tools as a language learning tools on literacy includes improved reading and writing skills, enhanced vocabulary acquisition, Increase comprehension abilities, personalize, hang on, personalize a learning experiences and overall language proficiency in timely manner. So notice the highlighted phrases in this particular page. What did you notice? Right, so these are the elements that we cannot, okay, do. In, in the way we used to do with our learners, right? So we must maximize the, uh, the, the, the available tools that we have because what our generation need now, especially when it comes to learning language, is the timely manner, is the timely feedback. Look at this. Okay, so here we go. So we need to cater the short span attention. This is one of the challenges that we could face as a teacher, not just a language teacher, okay? Because nowadays, since our students are technology integrated, we cannot deny that fact. So, you know, the short span attention is being what? Being, uh, 
being increased, right? I mean, it's become shorter and shorter because the informations are available anywhere, correct? Now, when we say short span attention, this, uh, this uh, refers to the capacity to maintain attention and stay engaged with a specific task or a stimulus for a limited duration before becoming distracted or losing focus. Now, how AI tools can help you with this? AI tools can help you maximize this, this span, the short span attention of the student's learning process. Okay, how? Well, simply because the AI tools obviously provides real-time tracking of mastery, and not just that, it also provides real-time tailored support as demonstrated by our earlier speakers. So, we encourage you to leverage your teaching language, regardless, regardless if that is language or other subjects, okay? We encourage you to leverage with AI. Let's maximize its benefits while it is there, okay? And of course, what is the, what is the, uh, what is the, uh, the, the goal of this? All of this effort, uh, the goal of this, effort that we are doing right now is to what? Is to effectively teach our students and effectively the students learn from our teaching. Okay, all right. So I think I have already laid down to you what I have on my plate, <laughs> but please allow me to leave this very simple quotation that I've got from the internet when I was um, preparing for this uh, for this uh, discussion, according to John Wooden, don't let what you cannot. Okay, let me just move this one a little bit. So he says that don't don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. You all have the resources. You can do this. You have. I mean, we are all teachers. We know that there are. I mean, limitations in some areas for us to deliver this kind of engaging and very beneficial um, strategy in teaching. But as teacher, we also know that we are resourceful and what we aim is our students to learn from us effectively. So that's all from me. Thank you so much for your great participation. I hope you learned from us today and from this short discussion so uh, we hope to see you and yeah keep in touch <laughs> Oh, thank you, Rose. That was so great. And thank you for the participation and getting everybody involved. It's so nice to see where everybody's coming from. And we don't just have Southeast Asian audience either. We've got some people from the US. I saw we've got someone from Scotland. So we've got quite a global audience, which is really nice. Um, so thank you. And what a great way to round up the, the talks. So now it's time for a super quick uh, Q&A. Thank you to those. Uh, I've had a few personal uh, messages, so I will direct a few questions. Dr. Wiles has had to um, pop off to uh, another meeting. He's a busy man, but he said if anybody has any questions for him, um, you can email him. So before we leave, I'll post his email um, and then you can get in contact with him if you would like to. Um, so I just have one question each uh, for now. Anybody who doesn't get the question answered, please feel free to email us um, and we can get in contact and arrange a chat. Uh, so first question is for Karen, And the question is, um, with Quizalyze, is it the only class platform? Is it, let me reread that. Is this only a class platform, or can you deliver exams and homework too on Quizalyze? Thank you, Phoebe. You'll be glad to hear that it's not solely just for the environment of a classroom. Teachers can assign homework. Um, you can all, you can also create kind of um, exam mode scenarios as well so it can be accessed both in the classroom and outside of it um as you can imagine the the engagement around the gamification side of things people did not want this solely to be confined to the classroom so hopefully that person is um pleased to ever ask that thank you perfect um okay question for thomas 
Um, so somebody's asked, can I edit the feedback report if it needs things adding to it? Yes, everything on Eduaid is um, totally editable. So you have fine tuned control over everything on the site. Amazing. Thank you. I uh, hope that helped. Um, and then a question for Rose. So said, hi, Rose. Um, if they, sorry, just are we asking. So basically, people are asking if they can have an assist, like assistance from you using AI in their school. So are you available to chat with anyone and how and how would they contact you basically? Thank you, Phoebe. Thank you for that question. Of course, of course. Um, um, myself and the rest of the team from the Quiz Alliance is actually almost 24 seven available through our uh, chat support. When you create your free account or your account uh, with Quiz Alliance, you have the access to us anytime. And um, yes, you can also email me directly if you wish to. Uh, my email address, I'm not sure if it's okay to give it here, but <laughs> it's rosemaryazish.com. So yeah, anytime you, you, you can send us a message. Great. Amazing. Thank you. So unfortunately, that's actually all we've got time for. Um, our speakers have been so eloquent and wonderful, but um, we are running out of time. And I do appreciate that it is um, the evening for our Southeast Asian audience. So we won't take up too much uh, more of your time. Um, but before we finish our session, we also just want to give a big shout out. Obviously, this uh, webinar has been sponsored by Quizlies and eduaid.ai. Um, and uh, Cindy, who uh, you will have seen her name because she organized this whole thing, um, is now just going to share a couple of videos about how Quizlies has helped a few teachers in the classroom. Um, Cindy, if you're there and want to share your screen. Are you there? Let's wait and see. She has said yes. Do you want to share your screen, Cindy? Okay, well, whilst we're waiting, um, just one more exciting thing that I have to tell you. So to obviously thank you all for joining us today, we will be sending you one month uh, of premium access for Quizlies and for Eduade. Um, you will also receive certificates and badges. So in the chat box now, I'm going to send you um, a job form. All you have to do is fill in your information. And once you've done that, ah, Cindy's sharing. Okay, great. I'll just finish off what I'm saying. So I'll show you this form. Um, just fill it in and then you'll be able to receive your certificate, badges, your access to um, your memberships as well. Um, but I will let Cindy share these videos whilst I do that. So take it away, Cindy. Can you guys uh, see my screen now? Yes. Oh, I will play now. We can't uh, hear it though, just so you know. Okay. Still okay, perfect. It's it's working. Thank you.
akan menyertai siri bengkel fizilais yang akan diadakan pada Februari nanti. Kemudian berkenaan dengan penggunaan kecerdasan buatan AI. Saya pasti AI berpotensi untuk mengubah pengalaman dan pelajaran dengan menjadikan pembelajaran pribadi, menarik minat murid dan memberi impak yang positif kepada guru. I will start with another question. Quizlice adalah platform pembelajaran online yang membantu saya sebagai tenaga pendidik untuk membuat kuis interaktif yang menarik bagi siswa. Siswa mengerjakan dengan perangkat teknologi yang mereka bawa, siswa terlibat dalam pembelajaran dan meningkatkan partisipasi mereka di kelas dengan berkompetensi mengerjakan game-game tersebut. Quizlice memberikan informasi sangat cepat dalam artian otomatis. Ketika siswa mengerjakan asesmen yang diberikan, hasil analisis langsung keluar. Hasil yang diinformasikan Quizlice sangat detail. Dari siapa saja siswa yang butuhkan bantuan, bantuan apa saja yang dibutuhkan, dan lain sebagainya. Dalam banyak hal, dengan tulisan AI dapat membuat soal dan asesmen sesuai dengan kebutuhan siswa dengan hanya hitungan detik. Dan tidak perlu berjam-jam lagi dalam membuat soal dan lebih fokus terhadap siswa dan metode pembelajaran. Penggunaan AI dalam pengajaran dapat membantu meningkatkan efisiensi dan kualitas pembelajaran. Dengan bantuan AI dapat membantu guru untuk menyusun kurikulum sesuai dengan kebutuhan siswa, memberikan umpan balik yang lebih akurat, dan mendukung evaluasi pembelajaran untuk meningkatkan kualitas pendidikan. Interaktif, canggih, menyenangkan. Oke. Okay. Amazing. Thank you very much, Cindy. Um, great. So I've, I've just seen in the chat box that there were a few issues with the link there. Um, if it isn't working, we obviously have all of your contact details. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that we send you an email um, with the link again, and then we can assist you if it's not uh, working. Um, but other than that, hopefully you'll be able to access all of your stuff. We are also offering another month of Quizalize Premium. All you have to do to get this, so instead of one, you'll get two. Uh, all you have to do to get this is post uh, on your social media. So either a photo or video of you using Quizalize um, or creating a quiz at home or using it in the classroom. Um, just post it on your social media, tag uh, Quizalize app on any uh, channel. I'll be keeping an eye. Uh, just needs to happen before the end of March. And this will also automatically enter you into a draw where a lucky winner will win one year Quizlize premium for free. Um, so don't wait, start posting now. Like I said before, you're also completely guaranteed your one month of EduAid, one month of Quizlize and all of the badges and certificates. Um, but apart from that, thank you for joining us on this exciting journey. Um, remember, AI isn't here to replace you, but to empower you as you create a personalized, engaging and thriving learning environment for your students. So let's make 2024 the year where AI and student driven learning unlock the full potential of every classroom. Uh, don't forget to click, click the link in the message box now. Hopefully it's working for you. Like I said, if it's not, um, we will make sure that we we sort it all out and we'll email you. Uh, but thank you very much for taking the time to attend this workshop and hopefully we'll we'll see you at the next one. Thank you to our speakers. Um, you have been incredible.